We got the Cold Steel Drop Forged Survivalist. This is the newer version with the gray Teflon coating and the plastic or composite scales on there, you know, half scales. Does come with the uh, Shakira X sheath, typical of most cold steels, and this one actually has got a pretty good pop to it. it it's perfect. Nicely done. It's not hitting. It's got you could feel it rotating inside, so I don't think you're going to be dulling your blade. You know, maybe they've been listening. I haven't had that occur on my cold steel knives, but I know a lot of people have, and I believe them. You can actually see it's got some room in there. Oh, it's not rattling or say any really bad, but um, it's got a nice fit to it. 52100. It's again with the Teflon coating. They range from uh, 71, or excuse me, 89 at Smoky Mountain Knife Works, which is surprising for them. I mean, I, I've gotten a lot of tops well below what everybody else has got them for, but I guess it's just, you know, I'm sure they're not blanket across the board cheaper than everybody else, but um, I've saved quite a bit of money on buying tops through them. So from about 89 all the way down to 69 on Amazon, and I saw on Black Friday, Amazon had it for 59 so maybe watch around Christmas time. It may actually go, you know, it does go up and down on Amazon. Shows the weight at 18.3 ounces. You know, the blade length's 8 inches, 52, 100. And it was developed originally in the early 1900s for ball bearings. And I was just looking on Knife Steel Nerds. I'm going to link that in into the description. It's got toughness uh, above O1, M2, and D2. Similar toughness to A2, and edge retention similar to 5160 spring steel. And if you look on there, you know, you read the whole article, it talks about what it's got similar edge retention and toughness. So those guys are doing a good job with uh, all their data. So I've been really impressed with cold steel knives. I, I have some other knives here sitting. I mean, this is just, if, if you understand what, a, what the drop forged is, you know, it's not like a knife blank they're buying from, uh, basically they, they get this thing hot and it, boom, they stamp it down and it's done. Everything, the handle, it's all done in one stamp or two stamps, you know, with the press while it's, you know, hot. It comes out, then they sharpen it. The older versions just had a dimple here. Uh, I'm not sure if people were complaining about that or not. This does seem comfortable. I didn't have one of the older ones. It just does have traction on it. It's like a plastic, and uh, like volcanic rock texture to it. It is comfortable. And, you know, it's a full flat ground. It's got a top swedge to it. You know, this thing is going to be one tough knife for 70 bucks. So I, I, I got some different knives to compare it to. Obviously, this is the, the better... Comparison would be a Becker BK7. This is the BK9. So you can see similar. I think this is a little thicker. This is the you know mid-height saber grind, Bowie style. The tops operator seven, which is just ridiculously thick. You know, like 144 bucks. This one with the G10 scales from TKC. I think the knife was 60, 80, 70 bucks, something like that. And I paid 49 or 50 dollars for these. So with a good sheath, you're at 100 and you know over 130, 140 bucks. I think these list for once. Most of the places are 169 or so. You can get them as low as 144 with the Kydex sheath. Nice Kydex sheath. And then obviously this is the Province. You know, this is an upper end production with Polish G10, you know, and 4V. But is that, you know, is this gonna be that much tougher than this, you know, in use? Are you gonna beat on a $280 knife like you would something like this? That's, you know, 60, 70 bucks. 
Oh, I took this um, Cold Steel SRK out to the desert. I just got back from a 11 day trip with the family for Thanksgiving. And this is the Teflon coated blade and this is their just their cheesy powder coating. And this was three fat pieces I cut with an ax and I batoned and whittled on avocado, you know, like, raw, like really hard avocado with, um, you know, some good knots in it. The knife did really well. The edge is still really sharp. I'm impressed with this SK5. I was having my wife, you know, just whittle a, a baton stick to get it narrower. She was just chopping it off and actually you could see a big sliver went up into the, you know, this tough X, whatever the stuff, that's the, the, you know, the negative on a polymer or plastic, you know, a rubber, rubberized handle like this. It just shot straight up in there. You know, I had to wedge it out with a knife, but uh, I mean, the knife's still functional, it's fine. But this thing, you know, considering what the knots that I went through and how much whittling we did, I mean, it's still relatively sharp all the way through. You know, it's got a couple hangups you can see in the light, but Cold Steel does a good job. So I expect no less from this 52100 you know, drop forward survivalist. It's gonna be a great knife that you could just absolutely beat on. You're not gonna worry about this, the guards here. You know, when, if you are gonna baton with it, you could beat on the back, you could beat on the top, since it is all just one piece. You know, it's got a lanyard hole on it, and it is sharp. It's got a pretty decent bevel on it, if you could see the light. I mean, not bad for you know mass produced. And 52100 is tough. It's uh, not crew wear tough. You know, it's not 3V tough, 4V. But uh, you know, it's A2 tough. Cold Steel does a. I mean, uh, Bark River does a lot of their base base. You know, that's their base steel is A2 for very expensive knives. Obviously, with nice handles on them and scales. But uh, the geometry on this thing just looks fantastic. This is just going to be a good cutting tool, in my opinion. So I wanted to show this. I've been meaning to do it for a while. I'm impressed with the sheath. It looks like they've upped their game here. You know, putting on these plastic scales. I don't know if you're going to like them or not, if you're used to the other one. But this is a nice package for 75 bucks For a good all-around stout fixed blade that I just seriously doubt you're going to break. So the... Cold Steel Drop Forge Survivalist in 52100, the new version, you know, with the gray Teflon.